All these intrusions is taking I like was long. just not quite far back in Is that um Louis Armstrong? Louis Armstrong right? singing that yeah. song? Yeah. He was a big Robin Thick fan. <laughs> We in. Hello. Welcome to the Chris and Kyle show. Swallow that coffee. I, I did it. You did it. Welcome to the Chris and Kyle show. Hey. He's Chris. Oh, it's too early. Blew it. Damn, Damn it. Blew it. Every time. Do it again. Uh, the whole thing? But just, just. He's Chris. Nope. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> it's a stupid bit. I'm Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our uh, recommendations episode. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about uh, some good stuff to watch mm-hmm. from the major streaming platforms, if you're subscribed to any of them. Top five quarantine streams. Um, Shit to stream while you quarantined. I like that. I think we have learned, though, that I have I have a problem with numbers, five, numbers and counting lists. Yeah, I do need to make... As long as they come in like like multiples of five, so you did 10. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll just right? do 30. It'll be fine. Uh, I mean... Sure, I do thousand. need to make an amend an, an addendum. Is that mm-hmm. how is that how that word works? An amendment? And I think it's an addendum. An, an addendum to our episode last time because I feel distraught okay. over not including uncut uncut gems in the discussion at all. I don't know how it of slipped your, by. Of your favorite. I don't know if it would have cracked my top five, but it would but certainly it deserve an honorary mention, which we did. So I have to throw uncut gems. I also di- I didn't see it, so like, Dude, I couldn't have brought that up. See uncut gems. Uh, yeah. It's fucking a lot great. of things I need to watch. It's great. Anyway, we're going to dive in. We're going to talk about... So, we're going to talk about a movie you can stream from each of these streaming platforms. And because I'm an insane person, I also added a television show. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I watch a lot of TV. I'm only doing movies. I really but like TV. Yeah, so the streaming services that we're going to be going over are... Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, HBO Now slash Go, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And Disney Plus. HBO Max, not a thing yet, but soon. All righty. And if you guys haven't noticed already, I'm already in my quarantine gear. Yeah, dude. I'm PJ's in a hoodie. Yeah. Which for I'm you always, is just like, yeah. I'm in a permanent state of ready to be yeah. quarantined. For you, it's just clothes. Like my schedule, my what I like to do, how I dress, I'm ready to be quarantined at all times. <laughs> um, do you want to give us your... Netflix movie? Yeah. Let's jump right into it, dude. So, are, did you have any kind of criteria for your... Like, oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. That's yeah. a good idea. So, I... So, this is very specifically like movies that you think people should enjoy. You know okay. what I mean? And I think that the movies that you say are going to say a lot about the type of person you are. Yeah. Because if you come in here and you're like, watch um, Hereditary or watch, like, you know, like cr- some some upsetting stuff. Right. It, it like that seems to be like you know you deal with the fact that you're locked in your house for long periods of time in a weird way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Whereas, true. It is a very it's a response. So I'll I'll show I'll I'll share what uh, my specific criteria was. Okay, because these are the movies that I like to watch. Yes, uh, I did the same thing. Movies I, I it had to be a movie that I really really liked. Yes. Uh, so all of these are movies that I like. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend something that I don't like. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, my three criteria okay. were they are new-ish. Okay. All five of my movies are new-ish. There's nothing uh, previous to 2007. Oh, wow. I think my oldest is 99. Right. Something like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so, it's 99. So, new-ish. Uh, they all have to uh, be sort of off the beaten path. Uh, like, I, they're kind of hipster choices, but not super hipster. Yeah, I had a similar... You, you can't pick something obvious. Yeah. Because everybody knows to watch the exactly. obvious stuff. So, it's stuff that you've you've probably heard of before, but you still haven't gotten around to watch yet. Um, and my third element, I wanted it to be a little bit heartwarming. I wanted a okay. little bit like a, a degree of, so you didn't non- go, you didn't go for the hereditary. I don't think world. so. None of my movies are necessarily like, they're not kids movies, but you could call them family movies. Okay. Uh, to a degree. Like there, oh. there's, there's a Interesting. spectrum here. I don't think all of mine, but I think that you could sit down, uh, with uh, your, with your family, uh, for all of these movies, mm. and everyone would enjoy them. You'd get laughs. You'd get maybe some tears. Ew. Uh, Love but, tears. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I had that final qualifier. Newish, off the beaten path, and degrees of heart. Family-ish. 
family family yeah. adjacent. Yeah. <laughs> All right, give us your Netflix movie. Okay, so my Netflix movie is a movie that I've brought up before. I'm pretty sure that oh, it was one of my shout-outs. I will say I tried to avoid stuff I've talked about a lot. Mm-hmm. Like Book Smarts on Hulu. Watch that, but I've talked about it too much. And th- that's fair. <laughs> like I, th- I thought about doing that, but there's probably a lot of people that are going to be coming yeah. to this episode that have never seen the show yeah. before. You know, so And here's the thing. If I reckon a, a good movie twice, I don't give a shit. That's true. Like, that's a good point. If it gets someone to watch a movie, then great. Mm-hmm. So my uh, Netflix recommendation, go on to Netflix and find uh, an animated film called My Life as a Zucchini. Ah. My Life as a Zucchini from 2016. Uh, this has a Rotten Tomatoes score. I'm, I'm also rolling in hot with with my Rotten Tomatoes scores. Okay. Uh, so th- I think three out of, yeah, three out of my top five have like, are over 97% on from the critics consensus. Oh, wow. So My Life as a Zucchini uh, is an animated uh, French film, and I know a lot of people are going to be discouraged by that. You can watch it with the English, uh, the English dub, dub, okay. right? Um, and there's also the French audio that's available as well through Netflix. But with that French dub, you get a lot of really good um, actors, like American actors, actors that you would recognize, like Nick Offerman, Ellen Page, Will Forte, uh, are probably the three biggest names that are involved. Uh, for the English dubbing, dubbing, um, but it's basically about this kid uh, named Zucchini. His uh, name who, is Zucchini. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. Yeah, uh, and he uh, just he lives in a uh, foster home, and that's essentially like he becomes friends with these kids, and there's a lot of hijinks, and there is uh, I don't know a lot of laughter, and it's really sweet. Um, it has a really like quirky anim- uh, animation style, which I, I, I like. Um, the, the writing is really good. It's able to like kind of go back and forth between these like heavy themes of like death and loneliness and, you know, treat it with like a sort of childish sensibility. Like any good mm-hmm. kids movie. Yeah. Like it has like a, it like has, a Pixar movie. It's yeah. A Pixar uh, is very similar to like the kind of sensibilities that you're going to get with this movie. Right. Uh, and probably the greatest fucking uh, thing about this movie is that it's super short. Like, it's not that much of a commitment. It's only an hour and 10 minute running time. Oh, wow. Yeah, hour and 10 minutes. I literally, so I watched this entire thing with the uh, the French dub. And then I was like, oh, shit, there's an English dub available. Just watch it again. And then I just watched it again through the <laughs> English, uh, with the English audio. Dope. My who, Life is a Zucchini on Netflix. Who directed it? Uh, so, uh, it's, uh, yeah. So his French name, name is Claude Barris. Huh. Barris. Cool. You're the uh, one there's who, a lot who of French. Yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, people that were involved with writing the movie but all right so watch it my netflix movie recommendation you've heard me talk about this movie a lot i don't know if i've talked about it a lot on the podcast uh the spectacular now yeah uh directed by james ponsult starring miles teller and shailene woodley and a one of those one of those god tier I was on the set for like four days performances from Kyle Chandler. Oh yeah. Where he's just barely in the movie, but he's so good. Yeah. And he's also like, would you say that's against type? Definitely. Kyle it's 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 mm-hmm. it's similar to uh it's similar to another movie I might bring up later. Okay. In in terms of playing against type. Because right. you know, everybody knows Kyle Chandler for being uh coach Eric Taylor on Friday Night Lights. Mm-hmm. In this movie he is a he's it's it's a bad dad alert. Bad dad alert. Yeah. Um yeah, the spectacular now is. I wouldn't say watch this with your family. I don't think your kids would. might be kind of awkward. Yeah, it would there's be, a sex scene. There is a sex scene. One of the most intimate sex scenes I've ever seen. Yeah. by the way. Yeah, um, there there's a sex scene. There's uh, you know a lot of like cursing and stuff like that. Uh, alcoholic. Teen. I can I could easily an watch alco- it with an my alcoholic parents. teen. Like there's mm. you know stuff you might not want your kids to watch. Yeah, it depends but on your parents. It's just a really really beautiful story about these two kids that fall in love and the way their lives are going and how they affect each other and how they, how they build each other up Mm -hmm. and how they kind of in this, in the same process, tear each other down. Mm -hmm. Um, I, it's one of my favorite movies, the spectacular. Now, um, my show from Netflix is a show called love sick. Um, it's a British, it's a British, uh, romantic comedy kind of show. Um, it's about a guy who it used to have a different title that you might recognize. Um, let me see if I can find it. I don't remember what it was. It was it was like more sexual title, the one it used to have. Um, anyway, it's about a guy 
who gets an STD. So he has to go back to all of his like former lovers and like okay. let them know. Um, it stars uh, a guy named Johnny Flynn, Antonia Thomas, um, who you would know from Misfits. Okay. And um, this dude who plays like the best friend character and I think is incredible in this show. His name is uh, Daniel Ings. It's the only thing I've ever seen him in. But he's like the, the, the balance that he strikes to me between like funny best friend and just like tragically sad uh, like Casanova character. Like he's he's the classic idea of a character who's like you know he sleeps with a bunch of women and he seems like his life's amazing but like he's just so empty inside, and this dude is so good at this role like, oh I love it it's like three seasons um it's not over I think as far as I know, um they they usually take some time in between seasons, mm-hmm. um yeah it's it's really it's kind of a it's like a formula that you've seen before but it's done in a unique way in a very uh, it's kind of melancholy, I would right. say. Is there like it's uh, very funny? Is there like a comparable TV show or movie that you would? Um, it, there's literally a movie that's very similar with the whole STD thing. STD thing. What mm. was that? I can't remember. I don't know. I can't remember. I don't know. Yeah, I I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Are they? Uh, what was the name? It L- Love Sick. Yes, yeah. Love Sick. Are we moving on to Hulu now? Yes, Hulu. All right. So. My Hulu recommendation is my only documentary on my list. Okay. Uh, There's a documentary that came out in 2018 called Three Identical Strangers. Three Identical Strangers. The way that I, the, the easiest way for me to pitch this is imagine being 18, 19 years old. You go to college, uh, and while you're there, you find someone that looks exactly like you. That'd be weird. Like, That'd be super this weird. person has to be my twin. Yeah. And then later on, you find that there's actually two people that look exactly like you. That would be even weirder. You're, you, like you essentially in like late in life, after you've already developed and everything, find out that you're a triplet. Wow. That's like not just a hypothetical situation. This happened to uh, a group of three brothers uh, in 1980s New York. Um, this documentary is probably like equal parts like like thought provoking and just fascinating and kind of sweet it deals with a lot of dark stuff Mm -hmm. and there is a twist that sort of happens uh halfway through the documentary that makes you think that it's like a fucking twilight zone episode Hmm. and the shit like really happened that's real Fucking incredibly high rated uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. Fucking 97 from the critics, 88 from the audience. Um, yeah. And I th- just think that there's enough mystery here. There's enough sweetness. Uh, like the, the relationship between the three brothers is just uh, so, I don't know. It, it, it's so palpable. Mm-hmm. And like you can just kind of feel it through the screen even though it, and it doesn't shy away from a lot of the really like fucked up shit that happens. Mm-hmm. In their lives. So, okay. Three Identical Strangers. You can find it on Hulu. Cool. All right. Here's my Hulu one. This is a movie from last year. Um, I think it flew under the radar. Mm. Weird movie. It's mm-hmm. called The Art of Self Defense. Mm. Um, this movie star- stars Jesse Eisenberg and Imogen Poots and a guy named Alessandro Nivola. Uh, it's written and directed by Riley Stearns. Um, okay. This, this movie is about. It's about masculinity and the like the falsities of it of like traditional ideas of masculinity it's about finding your uh, like your confidence and it's also about jesse eisenberg getting completely just like swept up in this this like really weird world that the sensei played by his name he literally is just called sensei the whole movie Alessandro Nivolo and it's it's just a scam basically and Jesse Eisenberg just gets swept up in it and Imogen Poots is a part of it and she's trying to like prove her ability to like you know she can she can outfight all the guys at the dojo and all these kinds of things and it's like weird and very funny kind of sad um yeah I, I really liked it I think I think it flew under the radar last year I think more people should see it um my show from Hulu is uh just came out recently it's called high fidelity um it's a remake of the movie from like the mid 2000s starring john cusack right um this one instead um swaps the lead role to zoe kravitz 
and she plays a record store owner who's basic. Oh, this was this kind of has a similar. She goes. She she lists her top five um, worst heartbreaks, basically. Okay. So it kind of has a similar vibe to Love Sick, where she's like going back and revisiting um, like former lovers and stuff like that. Okay. Um, this has much more of a an artistic vibe of, through music and stuff like that. Um, it's Zoe Kravitz at her like peak Zoe Kravitzness. She's just being herself, basically. It seems like. Um, they form a really fun cast around here of people I don't really, that you probably wouldn't recognize. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really likable show. I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. You want to do your Amazon Prime? Yeah. So uh, my Amazon <coughs> Prime recommendation was a movie from uh, 2013. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure you've seen this. Mud. Yeah, Mud's really good. Yeah. Uh, so Mud, uh, I think, but I, tie, I feel dude. like it's kind of, yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, uh, Ty Sheridan, yes. not types Simpkins, uh, Matthew McConaughey, Reese Witherspoon, uh, Sam Shepard, Michael Shannon, uh, is Michael is everyone... Shannon. Uh huh. Yeah. There's a lot of people, a lot of people in this movie, um, written and directed by Jeff Nichols. Uh, it's essentially about these, uh, two young boys, one of them being, uh, Ty Sheridan. Uh, they, they find this, uh, old boat on a beach and, uh, when they're investigating it, they find this sort of homeless runaway <laughs> fugitive played by Matthew McConaughey. They honestly, they might've just started filming a movie and Matt McConaughey was just living on this <laughs> island. <laughs> um, incredible cinematography, all of the performances. Uh, it uh, does have a heart heartwarming qualities mm-hmm. to it. Uh, mm-hmm. I would say it's like kind of similar to like a peanut butter Falcon. I was going to say you could double feature it with peanut uh, butter Falcon. It would fit really well. Yeah. Um, it has a, a little bit of that, like sort of, uh, woodsy like swampy like uh huck, huck finn kind of yeah. vibe um <clears throat> but yeah you can find that on amazon prime mud 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 i i second that one I, that's a good movie um i also picked uh amazon prime was weird to find a movie on because like mm. you can find any movie but you have to rent them usually so like yeah i think you as well as me were looking for stuff that's included with prime right um, and also their, inter- their interface kind of sucks. Yeah, their interface is brutal. <laughs> it sucks. Um, so I found something, how old is this movie? This is from 2007, um, starring an actor that we both really liked that left us too soon. Uh, it's called Charlie Bartlett. It stars Anton Yelchin and Robert Downey Jr. Um, Did not realize that this was on Amazon Prime. Yeah, Charlie, Charlie Bartlett's Bartlett. a good fucking movie. Charlie Bartlett, um, Charlie Bartlett is about uh, Charlie Bartlett, played by Anton Yelchin. He's a rich kid who basically starts charging people to be like a, a school psychiatrist essentially it weirdly i i had forgotten but i i've talked about the show um sex education this very similar vibe okay sex education yeah. is very similar right um it's just british and this uh-huh. is not british yeah. um robert downey jr doing one of my favorite things that well-known actors can do and that is play a teacher slash mentor role in a coming-of-age story right a la Woody Harrelson in Edge of 17, a la John Bernthal in Meet Earl and the Dying Girl. I love roles like this for, for really good actors. Um, yeah, I think you could you could second the Charlie Bartlett Oh, yeah, experience. for sure. I mean, we're, yeah. we're huge Anton Yelchin fans. Uh, Charlie Bartlett even trying to, uh, like, come up with a synopsis, like, for the plot of yeah. Charlie Bartlett yeah. is kind of tough because it's, it's almost like nine different movies, like little shorts. Yeah. That are just that have similar themes that are like are all starring Charlie Bartlett. Exactly. You know, like there's so many different things that happen. Um, my show on Prime is uh, a show called Red Oaks, which is another coming of age story uh, set in the 80s. It follows uh, Craig Roberts's character David as he he falls in love with a girl. Like he works at a country club, and he falls in love with a girl whose dad owns it. And it's basically their, the, the sort of journeys of these characters as they go from the high school to college transition in this like weird eighties social hierarchy of like country club politics where, where, whereas his family is like middle-class and he wants to be a filmmaker and, um, a really standout performance from Richard kind as his dad in this show. He's fantastic. Um, really both dads, Paul Reiser plays the girl's dad and he's really good too. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, this just, it falls into the type of stuff that I love. It's, I think it's three seasons and it's done. It's really easy watch. Um, very funny. Really good show. Um, hit me with your HBO movie. I was about to say, we going HBO, we going, okay. My HBO movie. I've definitely talked about this before. I'm not sure if I've recommended it before. Okay. Rush. 
I almost ro- from, watched Rush the other day, but yeah. it was like a little too late. It was like right. it's like ten forty five. Yeah. I was like, I can't do Rush right now. Yeah, you you, you gotta you gotta give it the respect it yeah. deserves, especially because we so we brought up Mif- Misfits earlier. Yeah, right. Misfits has this quality to it that Rush also kind of has, where like it sort of sucks in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> like Rush, I saw Rush in theaters because I was really excited about it. So Rush is a Ron Howard film that came out in twenty thirteen. It's really fucking good. So don't let me dissuade you uh, from watching it because like of how I talk about my experience here. My experience while I was watching this movie, I was like, oh, this is a bad movie. While well, mm-hmm. I was watching like maybe like the first 20 minutes and then it really fucking picks up and it ended up being like probably my favorite movie that year. Um, it's uh, essentially a, Brewer, baby. a movie about this uh, rivalry. Uh, it's, it's based on real life. Uh, this 1970s rivalry between uh, two Formula One racers, uh, James Hunt and Nicky Lauda. Uh, and James Hunt is played by Chris Hemsworth and Nicky Lauda is played by Daniel Bruhl. Um, Olivia Wilde is also in this movie. I'm pretty sure Natalie Dormer. Oh, wow. Is in like it pre Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like just incredible performances, just really sleek directing style. Everything is super kinetic. Um, and, one of the most like captivating bromances I've seen in a movie. Oh yeah, because it's like it's all about this uh, sort of. It, it's pretty similar to like Ford versus uh, Ferrari, mm-hmm. uh, and that like you. It's about cars been, and bromance. It's about cars <laughs> and bromance, right? But it's this one's more about like the competitive nature of like what two people can push e- each other to do. Mm-hmm. But the sort of respect that they have for each other is one of the most interesting things. And Daniel Bruhl fucking yeah, kills Daniel Bruhl's amazing. Uh, I feel like Chris Hemsworth about. doesn't get a chance to stretch like that enough. Mm-hmm. Like roles like, like he's mostly like the hot guy, the hot funny guy, Thor. Like to be fair though, <laughs> James he, Hunt in this, he's, yeah, uh, he's essentially so Nikki Lauda is sort of like the rat face. I'm really good at racing, but like that's Daniel Bruhl. So like, and that's Daniel Bruhl's character. Uh, Chris Hemsworth is basically the hot is guy <laughs> playing fucking like the Chris Hemsworth yeah. of racing. Okay. He's like really attractive yeah. and like he models and he's like, you know, always living life on the edge and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's super charismatic and gorgeous. Like yeah. he's playing Chris Hemsworth, okay. but, um, but he just takes it, you know, but a few steps further. It is really fucking good. Yeah. Rush. I'm not you can so, find that. I, on I HBO love if Chris you guys Hemsworth. Have it. I love Chris Hemsworth just being Chris Hemsworth, by the way. Yeah. Love Chris Hemsworth. Um, okay. I had a really hard time with my HBO one cause there was two that I wanted to do and I didn't, uh, I didn't know what chord I wanted to strike, but okay. I'll tell you what they were between. It's between brothers and crazy, stupid love, which are so different. Mm-hmm. So different. Right. Um, I think I would lean toward, um, like if you're going to just sit down and watch a movie, I would say crazy, stupid love is one of my all time favorite movies for just that. Just being like, I just want to enjoy an hour and a half, two hours watching a movie. I want to laugh. I want to like the characters on the screen and I just want to be happy. Um, the cast of this movie is nuts. Steve Carell, Ryan Gosling, Julianne Moore, Emma Stone, uh, Annalie Tipton, Marissa Tomei, this, it, Kevin Bacon, Josh Groban. <laughs> like, there's so many people in this movie. Um, it has a wonderful twist, kind of. It's not like it, It's not like a high stakes twist, but you're just like, oh, Okay, like this is how things are now, and it's like at the at the at the peak moment of the climax of the movie, and you it's it's just great. Um, mm-hmm. This is a really good Steve Carell performance. This is why I said earlier I didn't want to talk about Steve Carell yet because when you said against type right. for um, Kyle Chandler in the Spectacular Now, Steve Carell's against type not in this movie but in uh, another one of my favorite movies, The Way Way Back, right. kind of reminds me of a similar thing. But right. Steve Carell here. Um, being much more Steve Corellian and Ryan Gosling being just, you know, sexy. Yeah. <laughs> Emma Stone being just insanely lovable. Julianne Moore being like just this really believable portrayal of a woman who's just like kind of lost in midlife. Like usually I feel like you see midlife crisis movies are on the guy, mm-hmm. not on the not on the woman. Uh-huh. This one, it's more on the crisis comes from Julianne Moore's side and then it triggers like a midlife reinvention from Steve Carell. Um, Yeah. You got to love a movie that starts with a wife telling her husband she cheated on him and then he jumps out of the car. Yeah. That's great. Starts off hot. Starts off hot. Uh, Yeah. I'm a huge fan of crazy stupid love brother is also really good, but just for the, the, the sort of 
the tone you want to go for, brother, is way more intense. <laughs> yeah. Tobey Maguire and Jake Gyllenhaal and Natalie Portman are all really good, but yeah. it's a super intense movie. Mm-hmm. Um, my show, Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley. It's over. You can watch all of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Silicon Valley. How would you... So Silicon Valley is about a group of super nerdy dudes that form a tech company in Silicon Valley and their misadventures of trying to get it launched. Yeah. And it's hysterically yeah. funny, super clever. Really well, incredibly uh, casted. Yeah, uh, the casting's really good. Kumail Nanjiani. Um, Thomas Middleditch. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, dude from Freaks and Geeks. Yeah. And, uh, fuck, the guy who plays Weasel in Dare, uh Hold on. Not Daredevil. Deadpool. Silicon Valley. Um, Thomas Miller, just TJ Miller, Josh yep, Brenner, Miller. Martin Starr, uh, Kumail Nanjiani, Zach Woods, insanely funny in this show. Jesus Christ, so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Zach Woods, low key like comedic genius, mm-hmm. really funny guy. Um, all right, let's do our final platform. This was the hardest one because you don't want to just pick like okay Disney Plus. You don't just want to be like I'll pick a Marvel movie what? or a Star Wars movie or a Pixar movie or a Disney animated movie, Watch classic or contemporary. Like everybody knows, those movies are great. When you scroll through Disney Plus, it's insane. Yeah, I yeah, I had to dig dig, dig deep. So yeah, was, you, you you built up my expectations. So watch for Aladdin. This one. That is, which one? My recommendation. Which one? The, all of them. Oh, okay. No, uh, my so mine actually isn't animated. Mine isn't either. Yep. Uh, so Dan in real life came out in mm. 2007. Have you seen Dan in real life? No, I haven't. Steve Carell, right? Steve Carell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so if you're Dan looking for life. comfort in these weird times, go to Steve Carell. Oh, hell yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> hell yes, dude. Okay, so I think that... So this is probably like the worst reviewed mu- movie. So mm-hmm. it's like a 64, 69 on Rotten Tomatoes, okay. right? And a 6.7 on, on IMDb, which doesn't... Uh, That's sitting in the sweet spot of you can like this movie and it's perfectly fine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know why anybody would downvote this movie okay okay i've never seen it so i'll give you the synopsis here mm-hmm. a widower steve carell God, uh, poor guy every movie finds out bad. the the <laughs> woman he fell in love with is his brother's girlfriend okay who's so his brother his brother another amazing part about dan in real life is how well it's casted his brother is played by dane cook oh weird and Essentially, throughout the entire movie, uh, you see Steve Carell as this widower um, dealing with uh, living uh, in a cabin with his entire family because they're essentially on a family reunion, dealing with how he's fallen in love with his brother's girlfriend and his brother is a total douchebag. <laughs> uh, like, and it's like, and it's not even like played over the top where like he, like he's just kind of being Dane Cook. Yeah. Dan, but, but Dane Cook is like kind of douchey. So there's this thing, there's this thing in plumbing called like the path of least resistance mm-hmm. that the water will travel through, you know, piping systems and shit mm-hmm. like that. The path of least resistance when you're an audience member watching Dan in real life is like, it's so easy to love Steve Carell, even he, even though he's like kind of doing more dickish things, he's making mm-hmm. the, like more mistakes and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's so much easier to love Steve, Steve Carell than it is uh, to to love Dane Cook. Yeah, and it's so easy to hate Dane Cook. I am a Dane Cook fan. I, I will support that. Who are they fighting over? So, the the love interest, uh, Steve Carell's love interest, is uh, played by Juliette Binoche. I don't, I'm not oh, even sure if I've really seen her in anything, but she. Gives a really good performance, really charismatic. Um, oh, I recognize her picture. Yeah, it just the English patient, chocolate. <sighs> Dana real life just really hits this like note of like being sentimental but not being sappy. Mm-hmm. Um, that I I literally like watched it, rewatched it last night, and realized how much I love the movie again. Like, and I couldn't recommend it more. I also fuck anybody on IMDb who doesn't who doesn't agree with me. I also watched my choice last night. Uh My show choice is like my not like if you haven't seen them, just watch through the Star Wars animated series. Clone Wars, Rebels, Resistance. Resistance, not as good as the other two. Still solid. The other two, that's like peaks of all Star Wars canon are in those shows. The best things that happen in all of Star Wars. Like if I made a top five Star Wars moments list. I think at least three of the moments would come from those two shows. Anyway, my movie recommendation is a movie I saw for the first time last night. 
I don't know how this happened. Ten things I hate about you. Dude, what? Yeah. <laughs> you watched that for the first time last night? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Why are we doing a Ten Things I Hate About You episode? It's so good. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, Ten Things I Hate About You. For people who like me are... I was six when it came out, so I like I forgive myself. But, you know... Uh, <laughs> um, you were born like you've had this time. Yeah, but... We and motherfucking Heath Ledger, dog. He's yeah. got... Listen, listen. Heath Ledger, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Julia Stiles, Larissa Alainik... Elaine, uh, David Kumholtz, that's like your lead. And then there's the, the douchey guy. His name's Andrew Keegan. Um, it's a classic high school rom-com. It, that's what it is. But it's so good. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about Heath Ledger? Yeah. Come on, dude. Bro. I've, there, the moment he steps on screen, it's it's insane. You're, this, is the, this is like basically when he was discovered. This is like one of his earliest projects. Maybe his earliest. Let me double check. Um... Okay, so he'd been in, like, a couple episodes. He'd been in some TV shows. He'd been in a short. He'd been in some, like, movies I've never heard of. And then 10 Things about ten things I Hate About You happened. And he blew up. And he had a decade of just being that dude. Yeah. Before he tragically, you know, passed away. Um, we both love Heath Ledger, right. both for, obviously, for playing the Joker and for A Knight's Tale. Yeah. Which is one of our shared right. favorite movies. I remember being in high school before A Dark Knight came out, and I was like, kind of like worried mm-hmm. about. Because well, like, it was weird I was casting. Like, I was like, well, I was like, I'm I'm worried about him playing the Joker and stuff because Jack Nicholson was so good, and he, I mean Heath Ledger is one of my favorite actors, mm-hmm. like, and I'm still kind of worried about this performance. Like, what, what what's going to happen here? And people are like, really, Heath Ledger is your favorite actor? Like, he's what what is he deserved, is, like like dude. what like you like Brokeback Mountain? I was That's like, the other oh, thing. Hey, Brokeback Broke Mountain, back, yeah, amazing. People, 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 like to make jokes a about nice Brokeback tale. Light, Mountain. Bleh. Yeah. <laughs> and fucking 10 Things I Hate About You yeah. is so good. So, like, the moment Heath Ledger shows up on screen, you're just kind of like... You, I literally, like, sat back in my seat just because he he's, like, one of the rare people that has palpable charisma. Yeah. It's like there's an aura around him of just just charisma. It's insane. Yeah. I, I, you can't explain Your how Your eyes are, like, locked to the screen. When yeah, it's on. nuts. And then he's... he's they, they didn't even, like... He's he's Australian. Mm-hmm. He's doing his real accent. He's mm-hmm. not even doing an American accent. Yeah. They, and they just like threw in. They were like, "Oh, I lived in Australia until I was ten. All right, yeah. whatever." Uh, you get young, like baby Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yes. Um, in like such an earnest and sweet performance, like he does that thing that where he's like he sees the girl and he falls in love with her immediately. Thing that classic. Uh, like high school tropey thing. And then like every time someone's like, oh, I want to bang her. He's like, hey, you watch your mouth. (laughs) She deserves more respect than that. It's so funny and so sweet. And then like him, him and uh, uh, him and David Krumholtz, like they devise this whole scheme because the two girls, Julia Stiles and Larissa Olenek, their characters, like the the younger one can't, the one Joseph Gordon-Levitt likes, can't go on a date until Julia Stiles does. And Mm -hmm. then the whole thing's about them trying to get it's, it's kind of a kind of a weird plan to yeah. get Heath Ledger to date the older sister, yeah. and they're they're having the rich guy pay him for the. It's it's all weird. It's yeah. all it's all, none of it is like nothing in the movie is like groundbreaking cinema or ideas of of romantic comedies or anything like that. There's no like if you like Five Hundred Days of Summer is like some people don't like it, but it, it does things that are weird for rom coms. I really like Five Hundred Days of Summer. But it does things that go against type of a rom-com. I don't know if there's really anything in this movie no. that's against type for a rom-com. No. Like, Julia Stiles is the most stereotypical, like, she likes feminine authors, like, feminist movement authors. Yeah. And she's, like, she's really tough, and she's, I don't need no man kind of character. I mean, like, Keith Ledger doesn't play, like, he kind of plays, like, a a bad boy. Like, he's, like, yeah. sort of a social pariah, and he doesn't give a shit about it. Yeah. Um, and then he immediately, like, makes changes to himself. Yeah at first because he's getting paid to get this girl to date her and then he immediately falls in love with her yeah. and doesn't care about the money anymore. <laughs> yeah. Fucking 10 things. Saw for the first time last night. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. Allison Janney as the principal writing an erotic novel whenever her... St- it's so funny. The bits from the teachers are ki- so ridiculous and weird. Uh, I was like a little taken aback watching this because it was on Disney Plus and I was like... Okay, like there's some there's some jokes in here. I don't expect to be on a, in a Disney uh-huh. Plus movie. Yeah, um, Julia Stars, she she flashes her tits. Yeah, uh, young Gabrielle. You them, young Gabrielle Union is in this movie. She oh, plays wow. the younger sister's best friend. Um, there's the teacher. Uh, his name is Daryl Mitchell, the actor. 
he's like a complete asshole. He plays the English teacher and he just hates all of his students. It's very funny. I yeah. really loved it. Um, it's one of those movies that I've been meaning to watch for a long time just because I know it's like a, it's like in its genre, it's a classic. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I really loved it. So I would, I would recommend getting on the 10 things I hate about you train. If yeah. you, Cause I think more than anything, I mean, you might not have known that it was on Disney plus like, yeah, yeah I would sure. not have guessed that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But also like that train has already like been around the station a few That's times, okay. you know, there's some people like me. Yeah. It's and like of, kids could watch, like last, I would, if my sisters, if my sisters texted me and they're like, Hey, what's the movie I should watch? I would say, watch 10 things I hate about you right now, mm. right now. Yeah. You are seniors in high school. Watch that movie right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's our lists. Yeah, we did you wanna, it. You, you want to go over them really quick? I'll yeah, go through yours. mine. Uh, so my Netflix re- recommendation, you can find uh, My Life as a Zucchini on Netflix. Uh, you can find a documentary called Three Identical Strangers on Hulu. You can find uh, a movie called Mud. You can find that on Amazon Prime. You can find Rush on HBO and Dan in Real Life. On Disney Plus. All right. Um, I've got on Netflix. You can watch the film Spectacular Now, or you can watch uh, the Love Sick television show. I think three seasons. Uh, Hulu, The Art of Self Defense, and the first season of High Fidelity. Amazon Prime, uh, Charlie Bartlett, and I believe also three seasons of Red Oaks. Um, that show, by the way, is also complete. It ended a couple years ago. Um, HBO. Um, I've got all these slashes. Um, Crazy Stupid Love, Silicon Valley. Disney Plus, how, um, that's not the right 10, 10 Things I Hate About You, and the Star Wars animated series is, that's our recommendations. We don't know how long we're going to be stuck up in our houses. It could be a while, so you might be able to get through all that stuff. Who knows? Um, I watched a movie the other day that we're going to do a spoiler episode on. I'm excited for you to watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll probably watch it again to before we record to make sure I'm fresh on it. Uh, It is called Big Time Adolescence, starring Pete Davidson, uh, Griffin Gluck. Uh, They're the the two important ones. Uh, John Cryer's in it, but like, he plays plays Griffin Gluck's dad. Um, Yeah, I'm excited for you to watch it. Machine Gun Kelly's in it. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, well, that'll be, we'll do a spoiler episode. uh, That'll be our next thing that drops um find chris chris michaelstott.com read his scripts read the new one uh title again i was for something havoc play havoc play havoc mm-hmm. i knew havoc was in it uh play havoc uh find him on instagram chris michael stott i am devin will 25 on twitter and instagram find the show the chris and kyle show on youtube on facebook on twitter on instagram on all the podcasting platforms like share rate review all that fun stuff it helps the show uh, stay safe. Wash your hands. Uh, don't be like these idiots that go to spring break. Don't do that. <laughs> spring break. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let, let's get through this. Let's watch, watch a fuck ton of good stuff while we do it. We out. We out. Stay weird. <laughs>